You're listening to Good News, Good Music, 24 hours a day. KDNW 90.5 FM. Is it You Must Be True? You, I think it's You Must Be True. My oh, favorite thing about that song is Roy Orbison's blind. <laughs> is he totally blind, though? <laughs> You're saying he can see shapes of the woman? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blue Pretty woman. woman walking. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sir. <laughs> so, yeah. Seriously, from far away, you are hot. <laughs> Pretty woman. No, no, no. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> They're kind of like to me, pretty woman. That hockey game was insane. It was yeah. great. It was go, great. Go Preds. It was great. That's the second, uh, the second night in a row we've stayed up for two overtimes. Pretty uh, two uh, overtimes. Two overtimes. Huh. I'm sure the NHL. Well, we stayed away the last night. But still, good time to be a hockey this. fan, man. A lot of good hockey teams. It's always a good time Why? to be a hockey fan, Johnny. I don't know. I was giving these yesterday, and they say, "Why rad for Jesus?" All right. They're like jewelry. Well, it looks like it's supposed to say "wired," but I'm almost positive that's an A or it's an upside oh, down. It's made e. of wire. It's made of wire, so it's yeah, wired. Yeah, it's just a wire. Jesus. Is it like a pendant? Would everyone like one? Yeah, sure. Give me mine. Yeah, give yeah, me sure. mine. Uh, give me that. There's your wire. Love. Like, oh, show it and That actually went right. How do you put it on? Good. Um, I don't know what you do with it. You probably put a chain your... through it. Yeah, you probably put yeah, a chain, you put through, a chain through, through it. Yeah. It's, like a... it's kind of cool. You think Wired for Jesus was already taken? So that's why they put the A? Well, uh, it y looks like red. an upside down E. Huh. Do you think they had Christian t-shirts ba like back in the New oh, Testament? Like <laughs> Christian robes or Christian togas? <laughs> Let's just go back to our roots, you guys. <laughs> Before all these christian like a Like a... Sayings and terms. I saw a t-shirt that said, these play shirts. hard, pray hard. Yeah, play mm -hmm. hard, pray hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering if they had those back in the or day. Or the straight Definitely. out of the word. Straight the one out. we talked about a couple weeks ago. <laughs> That's the one. Do we talk about that one? We did. Yeah. Yeah. Straight yeah. out of the word. But so Johnny didn't hear it. There was a guy. <laughs> a straight out of Compton thing. Yeah. yeah. Straight, yeah. Out straight out of the word at one of Tim's shows. Two mm. of them, actually. It was poor guy. It was Ryan. back they to back. Gone. I know. It's not even, it's yeah. not even it was, clever. It was back to back. They could have said straight was, out of Corinthians. They could have said. Or Philippia. Yeah. Or Philippi. Straight out of the word. Philippi. Yeah. Well, Philippines. Are we, are we recording? Entirely. Yeah. Are we rolling? Okay, so let me, let's talk about Carrie Underwood. Okay, so she did the National Anthem tonight. Yeah. Which is a, it's a reach. It's when these teams do this and they're in big cities because they're trying to get the, the crowd ginned up and it's great. But I take issue with Carrie Underwood because she's one of the most beautiful women in the world. Okay. She's so, so talented. Multiple Grammys, blah, blah, blah. She fell a few, like a half a year ago. Yes. Horrible. She had 40 stitches oh, in her right. face. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then there was this whole story going around like, when I come back, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different. I'm going to look different. And I just want my fans to be ready. And so she took all this time off. She was so shy because I thought she's going to be mangled. This poor woman, she's got to adjust. I've seen multiple photos. Carrie Underwood releases the first photo since her grueling, yeah. her gruesome injury. She's stunning. I can't tell. I cannot yeah. see the scar. Yeah. I am furious at beautiful people being like, I'm going to look different. I'm yeah. not an animal. Like she's the elephant man. She's yeah. stunning. It's like, yeah. get over yourself. Yeah. Do you think Me there's like a lot of makeup going on? You think they like Who spackled? Knows? Spackled the there scar. Was some, there's some, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know that she doesn't have makeup on. But meanwhile, meanwhile Levi, lot. talking about the sportscaster right after the hockey game, he said, I don't like this guy. And I go, and then somebody said, what? And he goes, what did you say? He's frustrating to look at. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wonder if anybody's ever said that about me. It's, I like Johnny, but he's frustrating. Yeah, right, look I, I can't be the only the, one. The not much to look at tour. <laughs> That's, right. That's what I we I can't have. be the only one. He looks... When you look at him, and it's nothing about his person. I don't know who this is, mm -hmm. but he has one of those phases that doesn't make me happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes me frustrated because he has a very frustrated looking face. Yeah. And I know I'm not the only I might yeah. be the other one. Who actually. are you talking about? I don't know. When you got Jeremy Ronick. Jeremy Ronick. Was it Jeremy Ronick? Oh, is that yeah. Jeremy Ronick? Yeah. 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 What did you say? He's annoying. He's taking a few pucks when to you the guys face were, in his day. He's annoying because he was a black hawk. Yeah. yeah, he was That's a goon. Right? Wasn't he kind of a goon? Yeah, jerk. Uh, I think Libby and Spencer were f fighting when they were little, and Libby. I think Libby said that that he's paranoying me. Oh, that's pretty <laughs> that's good. That's a, a good word. That's pretty good. Well, you're well annoying done. me, and you're making me feel we. You know. Yeah, you're paranoid. Paranoid. Me. You're paranoying me. Huh? 
That's so. good. I'm going to use that association. one. But yeah, Jeremy Roenick is, uh, what makes him, is it the curly, the flippy hair? It's, it's the eyes. Some people just have oh, that, that face, yeah. I think, that you're like, I would punch this well, guy. Well, he's been, he's, like Monty. He's, he's had some concussions uh-huh. kind of like Monty. Too. Just like, yeah. He's been hit, you know. <laughs> Shave your beard. Yeah. Ugh. But it's, just makes me, it just kind of frustrated me. And I said he has a frustrating face to look at. Yeah. yeah. He might be a great guy. I, I don't know. He's, he's, a not. Face, he's, he's a not. Face. Okay. He's not. Only his mother would not be frustrated. By <laughs> only his mother would not be frustrated by Double that. Double whammy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, mom, they call me frustrating at school. My face, honey. Do you think? Do you think uh, like really attractive people have a better life? Yes. Good question. Yeah. In mm-hmm. many in many ways, they yes. Yeah. Because like I think well, they've done studies well, that no, they no, get no. more they get uh, more raises. I think I think they advance more in their companies. They definitely get treated differently. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind. But then there's are there drawbacks like I don't know. Not really. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Frank bring it breaks good, the dude. ice. I think he's starting to feel his he's, he's come out out. here at the podcast. He oh woke my gosh. up. Freight brewed a pot of coffee or brewed a cup of coffee, and he's like, I'm hyping up for the podcast. So he's ready to be oh, here right now, yeah. folks. I've Caffeine had like five cups of coffee. Brought to you by Keurig, not a sponsor. Not a During sponsor. the show, I was kicking it. That was amazing. Yes, I, well I think that de- most definitely people, they do get treated better. They yeah. get, they, uh, um, and I'm. Because you hear pretty women talking about, like, sometimes, like, nobody takes me seriously. They're always whatever. And I'm just like, okay, but it's. There's got to be some things that outweigh the good outweighs the bad, surely, right? Uh, Maybe. What do you mean the good outweighs the? I don't know, like you know, like ben, the, I don't know. I just feel like pretty people get the benefit of the doubt a lot. I do too. I think I think uh, normal, <laughs> yeah, looking folks just have to work harder. They have to prove themselves. Huh. Well, and it, it, to respond to all the, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> 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 I think it gives credit to what I'm about to say when I okay. do that because that means that I've really right, thought about yeah, it. Yeah. So it it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, for those pretty people that are complaining about it being hard, there's an easy right. way to fix that. I mean, right. a couple hundred Big Macs and right. a couple hundred days off the gym. Mm-hmm. You're, or you could you're trip not and fall anymore. like Carrie Underwood and mangle right. her face. Wasn't she just horrifying? Did you I have could to take, turn and look away? Yeah. We had yeah. the iPad back no. in front of house. And Tim was in the middle of a song, and I couldn't look away. Yeah. I really couldn't. She's got, she's one of those people for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. yeah. I was at that show. I was at that show. It was pretty fascinating. Mm. Well, and you know, with her, um, we did get to meet her at the Michael W. Smith it was Rocket special Town thing. Yeah. You know, and, and I was, I was kind of interested to, to, and curious to meet her to see if she really is. Mm-hmm. That beautiful. Because, you know, I mean, makeup and everything that right. goes on to make them look better on camera. I'm like, is she really that good looking? And she mm-hmm. she walked out, and it mm-hmm. was like, yeah. yeah. I mean, she wasn't exactly in her pajamas. Like, no. she was out. In a yeah, she, right. she was I mean, still she was, done she out. Knew yeah. Makeup. Yeah. 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 Oh, she was, she was, she was definitely dressed up and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, she just very standing there. a large Adam's apple. Yeah, that's <laughs> I weird. mean, it was like, that was the only thing that was Yeah, weird. you're like, get that shape yeah. down. You're going to be good to go. Mm-hmm. That's gonna. Be but tough. she was, yeah. yeah, she was just stunning. She really was. I don't know. Well, she's, she's very sweet. She's, she seemed like a she very was an amazing. And aware. one of the best things happened yeah. when she met Jack was standing there. Right, mm-hmm. right. I remember this. And, and, my son Jack. <laughs> and and I, I don't remember what kind of car they it was had a Lotus. arrived. Mike was Fisher, it a Lotus? Mike Fisher husband had just pulled up in a Lotus. In the a Lotus. door was open in the back. Mm-hmm. Everybody's and taking was, all these photos. Wasn't it like her. a yellow? Yeah, maybe. I yeah. thought it was a Corvette. I don't, I don't know. know, but it was a, it was a really nice sports it, car. It was a Corvette. I it wasn't that. one that any of us owned. Yeah. Um, but I just remember that. <laughs> I think it was Heather that said something. You want to meet Carrie Underwood? Yeah, and he goes, "Well, this is Carrie Underwood." And she goes, "Hi." He goes, uh, "Can I see his car?" Yeah. Or something mm. like that. Yeah, you want a picture with Carrie? He goes, "I want a picture with a car." I want yeah, because I want a yeah. picture with a car. Okay, I can't oh my it, gosh, right? so. But funny. he was just he told she just. She, she laughed, laughed it was so, so hard. Yeah. She, that was hilarious that she just got dissed yeah. by mm. this nine, nine to get year old boy. Out of my face. That's a tough life, man. <laughs> yeah. She oh. kicked him to the ground. <laughs> yep. Be yep. better, kid. Mm-hmm. So, Randy, you got to meet Randy Stonehill tonight. I he did. came to the show. Big day for mm-hmm. me. It's pretty cool. The greatness. So Mr. Randy they've been Stonehill. Trying to, they've been trying to work that out for a while, right? Because he lives in Columbia, uh, we, near Columbia. We started it in 2000. 14 or 15, yeah. trying to hook up with him. So I've kind of just, you know, every time we've been 
in the area somewhere. Love, I checked uh, his schedule. Love broke through the song. Love broke through. And uh, yeah, great song. And you know, we would try to make it out. He Please. goes, oh, "I'm going to be on the road," you yeah. know. And so I'm mm-hmm. like, "Well, we'll catch you next time." You know? Yeah. The Wi-Fi we just is not never... working. Randy is a guy. Can you make sure the Wi-Fi is plugged in? Randy is a true pioneer of <clears throat> CCM. Yeah, we were talking about him before the show because I feel like, in a lot of ways, what me and you do, we would not be doing without those guys. You were right. I agree. That they went into churches and did a new kind of medium, mm-hmm. a new kind of it? art form that the church wasn't necessarily ready for. They were called all these names. They're taking it too far. Mm-hmm. They went to churches that were just singing hymns, and then Randy Stono comes in writing these songs with a guitar. Wrote. And man, they just they took all the fire. And yes. because of that, I feel like we're standing on their shoulders in a big mm-hmm. way. So it's pretty cool to meet him. Uh, and, of course, he's a big fan of yeah, yours for they many took years. The shots. And it's a given now. I mean, it's all, yeah. it's just the, yeah, the Keith cultures, Green song the or cultures. the Randy Stonehill song? Well, both. They both wrote. Yeah. Uh, Which one do you want? Dude. So play do you the, think that they changed play Randy. Like, play, yeah, how play music Randy's was played in music? Absolutely, yeah. It was the kind music, of the Jesus movement back in the 70s yeah. where you get these guys who are just, you know, they're, they're in the music business. And Keith Green was a guy who they were kind of wanted him to be the next Donny Osmond back then. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he just kind of went through that whole, the change of going through drugs and all that stuff and disillusionment and became a Christian. And then, ooh, this is a rocked up version. Yeah, I never heard this. This isn't it? No, is this not Your Love Broke Through? Until Your Love Broke Through? Huh. Yeah. I've Maybe. never heard that I've version. I've never heard this version. Do you want me to keep rolling it? Or? No, do it. Let's see what it is. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I've never heard that. That's got that yeah. 80s. Yeah. Tick the woman. Tick. Tick. He's got that your California man. He's just yeah. Got, I love that. Play a. Uh, yeah. Play. Is there another version there? No. Okay. There's a Keith Green version. Play Keith Green version. Uh, but yeah, this guy was. Uh, I think. Was that Rainy Stonehill's version, maybe? Yeah, that's what we we're, were playing. And we're just used to hearing yeah, Keith Green's version? Mm, no, because it was later. I mean, they, Keith it was in like in the 70s, I think, that they did it. This, that sounds like 80s all the way, right? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Movement back in, movement back in the 70s. Yeah. Where you get these guys who are just, you know, they're, they're in the music business. And Keith Green was a guy who they were kind of wanted him to be the next Donny Osmond back then. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, he just kind of went through that whole, the change of going through drugs and all that stuff and disillusionment and became a Christian. And then, ooh, this is a rocked up version. Yeah, I never heard This that. isn't it? No, is this not Your Love Broke Through? Until Your Love Broke Through? Huh. Yeah. I've Maybe. never heard that I've version. I've never heard this version. Do you want me to keep rolling it? Or? No, do it. Let's see what it is. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I've never heard that. That's got that yeah. 80s. Yeah. Tick the woman. Tick, tick. He's got that your California man. He's just yeah. Got, I love that. Play a. Uh, yeah. Play. Is there another version there? No. Okay. There's a Keith Green version. Play Keith Green version. Uh, but yeah, this guy was. Uh, I think. Was that Randy Stonehill's version, maybe? Yeah, that's what we're playing. And we're just used to hearing Keith Green's version? No, because it was later. I mean, Keith was in like the 70s, I think, that they did it. That sounds like 80s all the way, right? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, man, that was pretty cool. This is the great Keith Green. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to learn to play piano, learn Keith Green songs. They're great because he... He does a lot of the major chords, but he's just great transitions and stuff. This is those, this is those strings, man. He's, yeah.
What year is this? Uh, 1996. Oh, this is, yeah, this is way older no. than that, though. This one it was released yeah, on this, iTunes, probably. Yeah. Because this is an 80s song. This is, yeah, 82, 82. It was, it was when I was in college. Keeps turning around. I mean, early 80s, and that that's when all these CCM artists were just... Yeah. They were starting to peak, you know? Things were really cranking. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Randy's the real deal. He's a really sweet guy, Wasn't he sweet? Guy, my He's goodness. What oh my a good gosh. dude. He was man. so... And his I mean, wife was so sweet. They were yes. asking what they could pray let's, with us about. And yeah. like, let's talk about the dog. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Was, Holy cow. Wait, wait, I was what? worried about that because... There was a dog with them, like a little schnauzer-looking dog. And they pulled this dog out, and he looked a little worse for wear. He looked a little... <laughs> he looked like he'd been he'd, through it. Well, he has, it turns out. He's 22. He was two yeah. years and old. What was his name? His name was Nigel. Nigel. Uh, <laughs> Nigel. Of I'm sure perfect. it was. Perfect. Yeah. Which is a great name. Uh, and Nigel 22, goes... 22. I have never... Wow. Heard of a dog being in close no. to that age. No. Maybe 14, maybe 15. Little dogs can live longer. My mom had a dog that lived to be like 22. Really? Uh, and it was a, little, it was a uh, long-haired dachshund mix. And so little dogs live longer for whatever reason. Huh. Mutts live mm -hmm. longer, too. Like, pure breed dogs don't live as long. So. Yeah. Because the mutt makes the... It breeds out the weaknesses for some reason. It's the mutts? Like a, yeah. The, the mutt, it's, like, when you take... It takes the best of all the breeds when you, when you a, breed a mutt. It's a more healthy dog, yes. Yeah. I mean, your pure bed dog is going to have more... Yeah. Specific physical. to that breed. Yes. Why do yes. you think smaller dogs live longer? I don't know. Because mm. you think like turtles, they grow up to be, they keep growing and yeah. they get huge and they, they live a long yeah, time. Yeah, you see mm -hmm. your turtles like 100 years old uh, or whatever at the zoo. Says the scientists found that larger dogs appeared to age at a faster rate. Their hips go. Uh, the research concluded that every increase in 4.4 pounds reduces life expectancy by approximately one month. Wow. Huh. Wow. Uh, That's a bummer. Any guesses on the oldest dog ever? Oh, uh, 25. 32. I would Here's say... 32? Oh. Oldest dog, oldest 38. Dog 38. 38? 30? No, I'm... Oh, I was right. okay. I was, Why yeah. are you looking at me? What's your guess? We're guessing. Your guess? Where have you oh. been? Oh! Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, <laughs> He's checked out. <laughs> well, you said 30. I thought you were answering, saying that no, was no, the no, no, I was repeating it. And I thought, wow, Tim was right 38. on. 38. That's no. how you said it. Right. 39. Okay. Oh, he's now, going. This is not, one dollar, Bob. <laughs> this is there he not, goes. <laughs> I'll see you right. and raise you one. It's final, gonna, are those the final guesses? It's going to be 25, yeah. right? 29. Oh. That's Ooh, pretty impressive. Really? Man. It's a what, lot of years. What kind of dog Still, was it, did yeah. it say? Uh, his name was Bluey. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was an Australian cattle dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He uh, those are was great from dogs. Australia. Of course, it wasn't in America. <laughs> uh was got uh it was born in a nineteen ten. Dingo ate him. <laughs> <laughs> we have Bluey on the phone, I think, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> From heaven. Doggy heads. <laughs> Here's what's interesting here. Okay. Doggy head. They, they put Dog. him to sleep. It looks like he didn't even die. So how long would he have lived? Yeah, well they, they probably was going downhill and they were yeah. like whatever. But I mean if it's that long. Yeah. If mm. he's already 29, I'm just going to let him. Let him live to the yard. Just he see. pooped in the yard. <laughs> just, <laughs> what? Serves, serves him right. He's a dog. <laughs> oh, Louis going down. Yeah, I want to let him ride out. Well, Australia. Well, like, we're putting all... Larry Dan. Putting him down. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, Australia's got all these, like, scorpions down. and spiders and everything. Like, for a dog to live that long anyway, mm -hmm. like, you're, I don't know. It seems like you would encounter some things as a dog. So, I mean, a tough dog. Cattle it's a dog. True Especially statement. on the Outback. Telling you what, man. How do we know it was in the yeah. Outback? Uh, just, we don't. We have no thinking. idea. Mm. He could have lived in the city. He could have lived in Sydney. Dangerous he, he wouldn't right? have lived no. in Sydney and last, lasted that long. So. Uh, so we have an update from our friend Isaac P. Remember, oh. remember him from last week? His relationship question? No. No? no what happened? No cut. I, wasn't I, I, I definitely don't know. The young boy who said that... There were two girls uh, no, yes. that yeah. were. I called yeah. him a young boy. I don't think that's necessarily true. P stands true. for playa. Right. What? Yeah. Now he remembers. It's coming back Isaac. to him. Yeah. Uh, so he sent us an update. He said, okay. "I need more help with the girls I mentioned last podcast. So far, one has backed off with the praise hands, but mm -hmm. the other one is now calling me and messaging me more often. Mm. Should I answer a call and say something? If so, what do I say?" By the way, loving the unopened Johnny W C D I have collecting dust. Oh, that's really nice. Thank Isn't that you. That's sweet of him to add yeah, in there at the end. That's mm. great. I well, just I'm on Spotify uh, too. Just answer and say I mean 
it just seems like talk to her. Yeah, unless yeah, like, you don't. If you don't have any interest in her, then just pick up the phone and say, "Hey, man, I'm not really interested in anything." You think the, that works seems like all a simple time. fix. What is the context here? I would ignore That's it. it. That's hope all I it have. Goes away. That's no, all I have no, no, is no, one I tweet. Mean, like, oh, was, what happened last yeah, week? I wasn't here. He said that he had two girls that kept asking him to take them on dates, but he wasn't interested in either of them. Like uh, he's the only person so, with that I'm problem. For the only person on the planet that has two girls. Two girls. They're like, please take me on a date. Is it, is it for Not, prom? No, just, no, just, just on a date. Just, just date. Just a date. Wow. Do we know anything about this guy? No. I mean, send uh, in a resume, man. Send, send in your in bio. Resume. You got our pottybreakerrockshowcomedy.com. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Would, yeah. Well, no. I, maybe I would assume because prom is all this month. Is it is it pretty expensive to go to prom these days? Good question. Kind of. It's, it's about... When What's I the went, protocol? Was, I know it's... When I went, it was $40 per person. But you got to get all yeah, that gear for a ticket about... to prom? For a ticket to prom. But then you go out and eat and afterwards. Then, it, yeah, you go out to eat. People go out all out with these uh, asking the prom. They make signs. Promposals, they... yeah. Oh, promposals. Promposals. Yeah. It's a new thing. Social Where media. Yeah, that's new I actually too. helped a buddy out with my with his. What he, was it? It was just uh, he got a bunch of balloons and wrote a sign that said, Are you up for prom? I was like, that's the way uh, to do it. Because the movie. Right. We just with well, I mean, they dress really... as a little old man. That'd have been even better. Like go all out. I don't think it. he was thinking that. He's thinking, oh, totally forgot to ask her, uh-huh. and it was like twenty minutes before he was gonna ask her. Twenty minutes before prom. It was twenty like, minutes. I need a date. Yeah, it was. It was the. It was. It was two days before prom, and yeah, forgot to ask her. So I went to the store. There's a lot of pressure on That's, kids now yeah, to come I, up I, with like something yeah, original. Yeah, and... too much pressure. It's just like why you know what what's wrong with picking up the phone? Hey. Yeah, you feel like a schmo if there's, you just ask no your girlfriend out. That. There's no picture in that. You picture. Can't post, you can't post that. You got to prove it. It's, it's, all, it's really all about social it's media. media. It's all about social media. It's all about. It's really not about asking the girl. Yeah. It's about impressing all your friends. I would say that's that about really, a lot of relationships but these days as well. I think it's more for well. the girl. I think it's more for the girl <laughs> for you to for the guy to ask in a more extravagant way so that she can be like, oh, look at. Um, I was asked in this so amazing way. Yeah, see, I'd just say, you know what? Forget it. Wow. Wow. Okay. I like that. You say that to Pooh. Confidence. Huh? You'd say that to Poos? I would have never done that. That's just... I just... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, when we got... I want to ask her to marry me. Hey, you want to get married? When I, just, I'm just saying, when I asked a girl to prom, it was just like, do you want to go to prom with me? Right. Mm-hmm. And this was like a year ago. Curry was furious. But, <laughs> I mean, the point is, we worked it out. <laughs> I've been got, combing the high schools all day. We got man. through it. <laughs> We got a, through it. So now I understand why you had to move. Did you we yell did. from your car? I, I see. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey, you go prom. Oh Pull my John Chris. My hey, class. Jerry, come ass. You going to prom? Uh, this is a question for Johnny uh, oh, okay. from Twitter. Uh, for Johnny, oh dear. Comma, who is your favorite rotating guest to listen to on the podcast? Mm. I know you listen each week when you're not on, so who I entertains <laughs> you the most? <laughs> like, are we talking character or are we talking guest? Guest probably would be... I like Dustin a lot. We're buddies, so I like listening to him. He's funny. Um, um, you've had Chris on a couple times. Those are good shows. Yep. All right. There's yeah. your answer. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's a zing at Bob. This is good. Any episode with at Bob Smiley comic... Uh, oh, oh, oh. I said... What's your favorite episode? There was a question on, on, on Twitter. It was like, what's your favorite episode of all time? This guy says, any episode with Bob Smiley comic, listening to him makes me feel better about my own life. Like <sighs> watching cops without all the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag love you, Bob. Man, that is That's, that's one of those like, no offense, but no offense. <laughs> love you. Yeah. Well, that's what like Bob would say, too. That's why it's a oh, it's for sure something Bob would say. <laughs> What well, you talk about? What's funny is like you talk about like the origin of CCM and all that stuff in the, the heyday. Like Bob was there for a lot of that. You know, Bob was touring with Newsboys. Smiles, yeah. Because he was talking about it today. He was posting that he was going yeah. to the Newsboys United tour with all the the previous lineups. They're all wait, wait. together again now. He's performing or he's just going? No, he's just going okay. to, to be there. Yeah. And then he posted. He posted this. I didn't. I'm not just saying this out of school. But he said that he. Uh, we're going to the Newsboys United, and then his girlfriend said, "Oh my gosh, I love the Newsboys." And he goes, "He goes." She goes, "When, when did you work with them?" And she goes, "He goes, take me to your leader tour." And she goes, "I had that record when I was a little girl." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then Bob's just like, "Go, <laughs> doink!" It's like I had three kids. <laughs> Jeez, that is tough. <laughs> That's funny. You Bob had to wear. Um, I don't had to, but he he wore that white suit. Oh, for the it was like disco a Steve tour. Martin disco mm-hmm. tour. That was pretty cool. Love Liberty Disco. Yeah. 
He had. They made him wear it. Yeah, it was like an inflatable. Did you know he looked strange stage. with like the bright red hair, mm-hmm. translucent skin, mm-hmm. white suit, the white suit. just invisible. It's a good look. Yeah, that's a nice look. Go, yeah. go Bob. Uh, this is for Freight from Twitter. Uh, idea for a Beatles parody instead of "Hey Jude," do "Hey Poos," come shave my back. <laughs> hey Poos, come shave my back. <laughs> Take a razor and make it smoother. <laughs> Remember, Remember to lather up your skin. <laughs> when you begin <laughs> to make it smoother, 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 smoother. smoother. Hey, boos, 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 that's beautiful. Oh, There's your request like and dedication. Just like that. Uh... I'm KG Kato. <laughs> I'm number 30. <laughs> hey, boos. Many songs have the word fire in them. <laughs> that was a good question. I thought he would like bring that up. Randomly uh, out of nowhere. If freight falls in a forest but no one's there, does he still make a sound? <laughs> no. Well, he almost tripped over the cables a minute ago, so we know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he almost tore the entire podcast. No, wait, what was that again? If he falls in the... Because, uh, you, if, if, you know, the, the, the old... Right, if, folk, a tree falls. if a tree falls in the forest, it, do you still hear it? Does it still make a sound? Yeah. So if freight falls in a forest but no one's there, does he still make a sound? Yeah, I don't know. We should do that, like, question. video. Like, have him walking through the forest and then he falls. <laughs> And then you just cut out all the sound. <laughs> cut out all the like, audio. It's just silent. <laughs> I was asking you guys the other day. You guys have come up with like <laughs> the, the squirrel like meme, the screaming, <laughs> <laughs> the screaming, or the screaming badger. Right, right. The yelling. Whatever happened uh, to the goat? The, um, the laughing goat or the screaming goat? Uh, oh, yeah. I still have it. That was funny. That was I really funny. It. I forgot to bring it over here. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, we need to. We need to have that. <laughs> I'll be more like yeah. Little tool belt. What were you saying, Johnny? Well. My fa- I was going to say, we were talking about Love, Liberty, Disco and like old school CCM. My favorite thing from old school Christian culture that I don't know if it's even still around, but we used to do shows. I was in a Christian band, and so we used to always go to a town. They'd be like, it's going to be great. There's going to be 300 kids there. There'd be 30 kids. They'd go, dude, we didn't know. The power team is across town at the church. They're at First Baptist. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't know. And all the kids went there, and I'd be so mad. Uh, so I started doing like power feats <laughs> during the show. I would tear like stacks and napkins. So then I found out about the power team. The power team was this group of weightlifters, bodybuilder guys. They all were saved or whatever. And so they would go in and give their testimony for like a solid hour before they would do n- any tricks. But they would do things like blow up a hot water balloon until it exploded. They would bend rebar around the back of their neck. When they like rip phone books and they stuff? They tore phone books in half. They so, do phone books. So I found out this. Yeah. This is a great story. So I found out this. There's a pastor in Nashville who's kind of like this maverick, kind of a, he's known to be kind of a rough, around the edges sure. guy. So the power team was coming into his church, and uh, he was like, yeah, they can come in, they're going to do outreach, it's fine. So they come in, and he found out that you set up their tricks the night before. Like, it's in their rider. All right, we need you to get 12 phone books. We need some cinder blocks. Yeah, and so yeah. what you do with the phone, like the, the baseball bat, the phone books, you soak them in water. Overnight, and then you bake them in an oven for like oh, five okay. hours to yeah. dry them out, and it makes them brittle yeah. and oh. easy to tear. Except for this pastor was upset that they did that because he thought they were real, and he didn't bake the phone books. Yeah. No. So they're up there for you know, the power of Christ. He was just like they were. They were not able. To, <laughs> they were not able the to tear. The, they yeah. were not able to tear the phone books. <laughs> And just went and then had an awkward conversation with that pastor, evidently. It's like a legend in Tennessee, mm-hmm. in our Tennessee district, you know, up there. It's so funny. So he was upset that they were... I guess he just was like, no, if they're fake, I'm not going to help them. I ain't faking the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting a... <laughs> Preheat the oven, get out of here. It's like getting mad at a magician for not using actual magic. But, I mean, pe- people in the yeah. audience do think that they're really tearing the phone books, though. So it's it is a kind show. Of, yeah, but it is different. They don't know that mm. it's a trick, maybe. They think these people are so strong. Just trying to out them. I I was yeah, a, in uh, doing prison work and um, there was a strong man there and he he did rip the phone book but he like you roll it well you like make it to a point uh-huh. and then he would just you pull it like this and you oh, can pull it like this and but pull it is a, it you, is a you, trick you but, bend it into it basically like yeah, you, you it's pull te- it it's into technique. each other yes yes and he did it on the binding he showed right? you you have to you squeeze it and it turns into a, like a point and then 
yeah, he would just kind of do this and pull it apart. But like if people break so, blocks and stuff, I still don't, it's like I think I could do it or anything. Like ah, I see what he's doing there. Well, yeah, if you've ever I'll go seen, try it. Yeah, if right. you've ever seen like like a karate, if you do karate or anything like that, and you break a a, a board. They bend the board like the person holding it knows to like bend the board as much as possible to make it like um, to just make it easier yeah, to snap. I guess. Yeah. So it's like I mean, it's all everything in life is a lie. Honestly, <laughs> that's you. <Was> he, <laughs> that's me. It looks like Caleb. It does a little bit. Okay. It kind of does. Huh. <laughs> There's a guy on the screen that's just like looking, staring into I the think abyss. It's, it's not Ryan Ellis. <laughs> Waiting Who is the that? question. Thirty three Echol maybe. Let's look that up. Yeah, but the uh, the power team, or they had another one, a different there was, one. There was um, an in, the impact team. I remember impact. them. There was uh, they I did the one guy who I think he's a pastor in uh, Dallas now. Um, On the, the impact team, yeah. The I don't know if it's impact or strike force. Is it the I guy? It was strike is it the guy force. at um, that Gateway? which we've been to. Or, no, not it's not Gateway. Gateway. We've um, been to. It's that crate with that crazy foyer and up in Frisco. Yeah, it looks like a. a oh, um, I know what you're talking about. Uh, and a European elevate life. Is elevate, that, yeah, elevate, elevate, life. Yeah. That pastor, he, I think he was a leader of Strike Force. Does he still look like he's in shape and he's I ripped think, and stuff? I think he's still. Yeah. Oh, this but is. But uh, I remember seeing him at Silver Dollar City or something, and he, he was doing, and he, he did the thing where he had the, um, the duct tape around his right. wrists, and then he had the handcuffs. He, yeah. He'd pull them apart. Jeez. That was pretty Well, I don't think crazy. I could do that. I, I mean, I'm no. not. Look, I'm not. I mean, he'd put his hands together. <clears throat> pull them apart. Wow. Yep. Have you, ever, have you ever had? Have you ever been like put in a straight jacket before, or like see people mm. like? Show, I have a magician friend, and he was like, "Just put this on, just see." Because you always think, "Well, they know how to do this," mm-hmm. but it's it's weird. Do they dislocate their shoulder to get out? They have to know they're double jointed. Yeah, they know have to know how to pop their shoulders uh-huh. out of joint. Wow, just not good for you over time. No, I would. I think I feel claustrophobic if I did that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I'm cool with like a, mag- a magic show because I'm like, well, I know. <laughs> I like being... I don't want to know the secret. I'm like, I want mm-hmm. to believe that you're a warlock. I want to believe this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to know the secret. Yeah. <laughs> I like pro wrestling. I don't care. I'm not judging the power team. You go, power team. What do you think about Ronda Rousey being there? I mean, oh, she on she that? Wrestler she's now? on... She's a wrestler yeah. now. She's w- pretty good already. She, like, WWE. She, already, she had a pretty good match. <clears throat> pretty convincing little... Uh, you know. She had... She tumbled. It was something. <laughs> but she can really fight, so... Be weird if she like was to go right. off and like really fight. If they if they kind of really ticked her off, yeah, and she just comes at him and really starts. I mean, there's got to be a, a a good amount of contracts written up and insurance, and you know, in case somebody does. Well, it's like it's 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 uh, prearranged, right? But it's not fake. Like they're really falling off things and taking oh, huge yeah. bumps and getting knocked mm-hmm. through tables and oh, all that stuff. They get seriously injured. Yeah, I mean, all the surgeries. Like Hulk Hogan's had like 40 surgeries or some crazy number oh, really? like that. Yeah. yeah, he's had like double knee replacements, hip replacements, like five back fusions. It's unbelievable. And he keeps coming back. He's in his 60s now. They were trying to bring him back to this last event. Oh, my god! Can Hulk make it? Because he's yeah. such a big, vibrant part of what they do. So. <laughs> well, we're, I, I, forget, I was talking to somebody a, you know, a couple of weeks ago about that, about how, um, you know, when they win a championship or something, yeah. that's a big deal. I mean, right. they celebrate, and they're just crying. And I think it was the... The Ric Flair has a new... Like yeah, a, 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 30 for 30. 30 for 30 out. But they were saying, you know, yeah, when they... But even though it's rigged in, a, mm-hmm. in, a, in an act, they still... That's a big deal because it's right. Their brand is being accepted. They're like, well, we want this guy to be champion now because, you know, he's bringing it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they take it very seriously. Are there people out there that, it's like that think it's real? Oh, I don't know. Surely absolutely. not. You absolutely. Oh, oh, do I, people oh, think it's yes. real? Oh, absolutely. Yes, there are definitely. <laughs> There's a lot of weird oh, people yeah, out there. Yeah, I would yes. believe sad. I believe it. Yeah. yeah, that's sad if they do. Oh, and they'll fight you. Yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll come after you. My mom is. <laughs> she'll, 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 she'll bite your head off. <laughs> Tim, you know it's true. John Cena is not. He would not lie. <laughs> he is a good man. He's a good man. Coach, look at the look at him wearing those make us, And he would call us different wrestlers' names, mm-hmm. you know, and he would have us come in and pose and say, hey, you know, like the... Oh, he'd introduce you. You'd come yeah, out. He'd introduce us, and, and it was always character. some... Yeah, some wrestler's name or... Mm-hmm. Oh, he didn't manage you to make up Bill, characters? Bulldog. What was it? Bulldog. Bulldog Bob Brown. Bob Brown. Oh, sure. Bulldog yeah. Bob Brown. Was he one of the St. Louis guys? Because uh, all the, when all the territories so. had their own stars, Harley Race. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. were at wrestling at the Chase. Yeah. Chase Park. They all had Plaza. muffin tops. You know, they had muffin tops. Yeah, before stomachs. you were ripped. Yeah. Before you all were right. cut up. Yeah. Yeah. 
These guys were flabby, man. <laughs> Dusty Rhodes, man. That guy was a piece of work. See, now to me, it's too polished. Yeah. It's too perfect. It's too polished. It used to be just where it looked like the, the ropes were, were garden hose. <laughs> And the turnbuckles yeah. were just like this. This is an old just, boxing glove they duct taped. Yeah, on I mean, there. the people in the audience were just sitting in you know right. folding chairs, and, mm-hmm. and that's when it was real to me. That was, <laughs> Garden nose. Then oh, and Andre the Giant was on. We're just like, oh, it's the best thing ever. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. That documentary on him was pretty cool. HBO I see that. Did. Was it yeah. really really good? I it was, was kind of sad. It was very good. I just want to let you feel you're doing well. Hey, <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> Anybody want a peanut? Anybody want a peanut? Thank <laughs> you. What was that? Saying that live sketch where it was Andre the Giant ordering an ice cream or cone. Ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to decide. Pistachio. I don't know if I want pistachio or not. I don't know because he's French, right? He's yeah. French. I want right. to see if you can match his voice. Here. <laughs> okay, play some Andre the Giant talking. We'll see if we can. You gotta make your tongue really big in the back of your mouth. You have to make it big in the back. Fast, fast. Think you like to scream at us? Probably he means no harm. He's very, very short on charm. He's very, very short on charm. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Sorry, Dad. Enough of that. Percy, are there rocks ahead? If they are. You'll be dead. No more rhymes now. I mean it. Anybody want a peanut? (laughs) 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 You'll be dead. Pretty good. So good. Pretty good. You are the brute squad. (laughs) You are the brute squad. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So funny. That. So you think that movie holds up? I do. I mean, I just think it's so charming and and sweet. So Uh, different. Yeah, I really like it. There's like a book written yeah. about it. Carrie Ellis wrote a book about it called uh, As You Wish. And it's mm-hmm. about the making of that movie. And how, really? Yeah, and it's really good. Really? And in fact, it, the audio book, that when he, there's a section for each person and the people who are still alive that were in the movie, like Billy Crystal, he reads his section. So it's pretty cool. So really? It's, yeah, he tells, mm-hmm. so it's kind of a cool, they do it in first person. I wonder, so. I wonder if they knew it was going to be good, like when they I read it. I don't know. Or, just I think he talks about that in the book. My wife just got through with it, and she said it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, is there anything good? Is I mean, I went. There was a movie theater by the place we're at tonight. And yeah. I walked over there and just like. You didn't want to see any of it. I, maybe there's Nothing another Avengers, but that's like the twenty. Is that it's, getting a little too much? The Avengers I don't know. I've heard now. This one's pretty great. You're thinking but, like they're just kind of riding, going to ride this out. Yeah. Apparently keep, it's like a three-hour movie. Or something. People are freaking out about it. They'll keep making yeah. them until we stop. It's I mean, been the it's been movies. the most waited for Avengers movie, definitely. Because okay. they're bringing so all Avengers they're joining all the yeah. universes, right? Every every Avengers fan is definitely like this is the movie. They they but well, I feel like I've already seen it. Yeah, I feel like I've already seen. You basically have. If you've seen any other other ones, you've basically seen it. Yeah, but. Princess Bride has got to be one of those movies that's like you just can keep watching it. Like a lot of movies, especially like the Avengers, you watch it once, you're like, yeah, yeah, I can live my entire life and never, not see that movie again, and I'll be. Why fine. can you watch it over again? Why Princess Bride? Yeah, it's a lot of just like funny parts that you want to see again. It's like, like quotable, very quotable, very too. quotable. It's yeah. it's like watching The Office, but it's it's. One of those movies, like when he's in the when he's in the forest, and you like are waiting for that part for that big enormous <laughs> rat, ridiculous jump looking rat, to jump him. out and just yeah. bite him because it's so funny and it's and, Got that and fake honestly tongue exactly that's shooting out. <laughs> and it's honestly like it's like you're not really watching it; you're kind of watching it for the storyline. But it's really just it's really just a really great funny movie, yeah. and I and I think that makes it's well, one of those it's a classic story. I mean, yeah. it's just. Yeah. But for like me, Kirk Cameron would say, uh, what is it? <clears throat> kill the dragon, kill the dragon. The girl. save the girl, save the girl, get the girl, kill the dragon. Yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. a classic. And, it's, and for me, there's a, there's a few movies that are like Princess Bride where I can just watch them does multiple Monty times. Does Monty Python, Search of the Holy Grail, hold up to that? Monty Python does for me. I mean, in me, to me, it, those are... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You, those yeah. Two, Especially now because it seems more classics. homemade and a lot of YouTubes or funny mm-hmm. videos are kind of homemade. Yeah. yeah. So Even it's YouTube like now it is getting life more higher it. quality than Monty <laughs> so Python. It's absurd. Like, they had yeah. such a real handle on the absurd side of comedy, yeah. Monty Python. Mm-hmm. Yeah, YouTube. English humor is very distinctive that way. It's either really, really, like, uppity 
or, or really it's really silly. silly. Yeah. Well, they would have. Uh, I remember because we watched it on Channel Nine, which is our PBS station, at not, at mm-hmm. late at night when I was a kid, <clears throat> and um, you know, of course, they had the silly the silly skits, and they had the cartoon weird cartoons. Yeah. And then they'd have you know what's his face naked playing piano. Right. Just turn around, look and say hi. He's like, just, yeah. just naked yeah. on the at the piano bench. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> what is going yeah, it's on? Like, what is that? What are you kidding me? <laughs> I just, I'll never forget the first time I saw Monty Python. They came, the, the horse, the sound of the horses, and then he shows up banging those coconuts, and I was like, oh, dude, they're really so doing, doing they're yeah. really doing something different. Well, here. the show is like yeah. an hour for something totally different. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. But I've yeah. heard that the Monty Python guys do not like that movie. Like most of them don't really? look back on it and they're not. It's so interesting when somebody mm. does not happy with their old work that you love. Do they yeah. do they because it became such a cult classic they, they feel all, like that defined them? Maybe and they're all feuding, you know, they all don't like each other now and so they get back together every now and again to make a little money, but it's like Spinal Tap's the same way. That group doesn't like each other. You know, Harry Shearer really? Harry Shearer is like a total pill evidently to deal with and they just really? don't dig him and I don't know. But uh, yeah. I'm fa- I'm fascinated by that because we always want everybody. Well, I want everybody to get along. You just want to feel like. Mm-hmm. But then the Beatles break up, and you're like, "Oh, what happened?" Yeah. Blame it was Yoko. Yoko. It was Yoko's fault. She's just in the corner. I just show, I'm just here. He, <laughs> John told me to come. <laughs> you know that's that's what what happened. It's the worst. You, you see, she couldn't even hardly peak, speak yeah. English. Peak right. English. She couldn't speak English. <laughs> she, she couldn't speak. <laughs> and she's just <laughs> sitting <laughs> over there. <laughs> No, 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 no! It's not racist. It's the song. Right? I can't change the words to the song. Well, it, yeah, it's I can't. No. So you can't. Yes, you it's can. It's copywritten. The Wait, Kale, cut it's, it out. Right now, you say the same thing. <laughs> well, we really do need to copyright our stuff. There was uh, there's a movie I saw, a Wes Anderson movie called Isle of Dogs, and it's like stop motion. Mm-hmm. It was really great, uh, and one of the characters is this dog, and it's named Yoko something, and I was like. I'll bet you a dollar the voice of this dog is Yoko Ono, and I was right. She's the voice of that dog. Really, really. I was like, you know what? I saw just, previews for that. Was it good? It's really good. It was very West so Anderson. So different. Oh, it's yeah. super, super strange it's and n- new. Yeah, yeah, brand new. Yeah, yeah it just came out last week. Very good. Very mm-hmm. cool. Uh, and it's like a stop motion animation. It's about um, the dogs uh, in Japan all get s- sentenced to this island to die because they get this weird disease mm-hmm. and so this kid goes looking for his dog who's the uh the ward of the mayor or whatever he goes looking for his dog years later and, mm-hmm. and of course the islands become just overrun with dogs and some of them have it's just interesting but it's really funny but it's strange of course yeah. it's wes anderson but mm. um i don't know i liked it but yeah i agree with you that it's like i have movie pass mm-hmm. uh so i can go see a movie every day if i want to but lately, I'm just like, I don't want to see it. You look on Rotten Tomatoes, everything's got like 20% mm. critics ratings. You're like, I don't want to waste a day doing this. Have just you seen A Quiet Place? Loved it. I want to see it. I want to see it. it. It's definitely worth seeing. That's it's fascinating. Heard. Too. Have you heard about it? So You were talking Kr- about it. Krasinski from The Office, Jim from The Office, he, oh, wrote he, it, directed it, and stars in it okay, with his wife. Wait a second. I, I heard... Emily Blunt. I think it was Stephen Crowder talking about it on YouTube. So yes, I, I just heard about kind of the gist of so what the like story was. So it's like basically they so. paint this picture of uh, they're alone. Almost everybody's dead somehow. Mm-hmm. You don't know exactly if, how many people are alive, but this family's just like tiptoeing barefooted through this barren dystopia of a town. Right. And uh, because if they make any noise, these creatures they have super hearing. Yes. And they come and get you. Okay. So and they have kids, and the wife is pregnant, so she's just dreading, like, a screaming baby. What's that? I mean, they build the tension so I well. It, yeah, we heard it's it was unbelievable. really intense. So mm-hmm. good. And uh, his daughter's deaf in it, and I heard the actress that played her in real life is deaf, too, so that was a kind of a cool character spin. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of Signs, the M. Not Shadow oh, really? Signs, yeah. as far as, like, the weird redemptive quality of it all. And reminds me of Church. Is classic. <laughs> if you Growing make any up. noise, you get in you trouble. One noise, one. <laughs> One noise in the house of the Lord. They're going to come get you. Well, when I was watching the whole time, I kept thinking, here's a family who hasn't farted. They're afraid right, to right. fart. They're afraid to fart. They can't flush a toilet. They can't fart. These people, that's hell. Right? Yep. That's what hell has to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You right. got to hold every fart. You can't flush a toilet. Your house is just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. No Taco Tuesdays is over. That's right. Because you know, tacos <laughs> cause farts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. There's a brand new premise. Yeah, I'm Taco sorry. Bell calls us farts. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tim. So mm. there was a tweet. You're such a hack, Johnny. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace the hack. Just join us. I will. Come with me. I will. Uh, let's, let's walk see. hand in hand through the hack forest <laughs> and take what we want and leave. But be careful. But be careful. No, no noises. No but you know, noise. there's some bits that you do, you're just like, you know what? This is, yeah, it's it's been done before. But you're like, oh, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Are you? Would you do that, or do you? Are you pretty averse to that? Uh, well, no. Every now and again, you'll be like, well, this is this is kind of a low hanging fruit or whatever. But it's mm-hmm. still it's a it's a quality laugh. It's worth whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah. plus, it's like I think there's certain times like you're. It hits more like if something's more in the news, mm-hmm. like um, oh, what was recent? Like when Matt Lauer was going through getting fired or for something, right? And, and uh, you know, you say anything about his name, people would just laugh. Like for a week or two, when Ken Kington he had a joke, and I yeah. said, "Who was his boss?" Matt Lauer. It just, yeah. But it was only like for three days. <laughs> you had a funny. window. You had a Matt Lauer window. Yeah, so I was like, I picked that fruit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you're right. Uh, when there's there's some jokes like if you've been doing it a while, but then something in the news seems to ring with it, like it'll hit harder all of a sudden. You're like, wow, that's hitting harder than it used to. Um, yeah. I remember like you've got all the you had all this Chick Fil A material, especially a few mm-hmm. years ago when everything happened with people protesting them. Uh-huh. And yeah, I remember I was with you in one California run, and you were like sweating it, like what what's this going to be like if I can't? True. It's weird. Yes. Yes, Our church is going to be sense, starting to be sensitive to don't bring up Chick Fil A here. Mm-hmm. Or well, can't do it now. Yeah. Or, yeah, I did a show in Flint, and I remember like I wasn't going to mention the water. I feel bad for those people. I wasn't going to make jokes about your water. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. their fault. And I, somebody told me right before I went on stage, don't joke about the water. Yeah, I was like, wow. I wasn't. I guess they just have to tell people because people will be out there. I know what'll get them. Yeah, I'll talk about how their water's poison. Mm-hmm. That'll just crack them up. Uh-huh. That's awful. Well. I mean, I've, I, was, I was in a place that had a water issue, but it was cleared up. Yeah. But I just said... I guess that's different. Yeah, like halfway in the show, I said, can I get some water? And I had somebody bring me out a tea. <laughs> you know, it was like a nice tea, but it's like... I, it just, yeah, it worked well. Oh, my God. But, they, got the wa- they got your water bottles on the stage. Yeah, yeah. You go, uh-huh. was this bottled here? Yeah, yeah. You know, right. That kind of thing. It's right. like, it was this, uh-huh. is this from here? So sometimes I'm like, eh, they tell you, yeah. don't talk about the water. You're like, eh. Well, there's one <laughs> but to me, part of it in a like, nuanced way. I can. Yeah, there was, was just try because there could be something magical happening. There. there was one show where like one of the first things they said to us when we walked in was, "Don't make any Mormon jokes." And yeah. I think when I told you that, you were like, oh, "I'm going to hit that joke five, so hard." Five yeah. Mormon yeah. jokes. Like, yes. You're like, yeah. "I'm not going to stop." Like no. I'm, I'm definitely telling that joke now. You're, you're cause <laughs> first, you're like, "Who are you? What do you know?" Uh-huh. You know what? What do you mean? Is this just something? No Mormon? No, no, I'm not. I'm gonna. It, you know the things you really have to, uh, yeah, stay away from. Like any kind of like if there was a shooting or something that yeah. was a violent thing, and you have yeah, that's what you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that. That's no matter what you do. You know. Um, yeah, it's like don't punch down. That's kind of the mm-hmm. the general rules. Don't punch down, punch up. Unless you can get away with it. Right. But yeah, I <laughs> sometimes you just um I don't know. I think I think when when people would say, you know, like don't joke about Mormons or the the Mormon it, it just I question it first. Yeah. Um like is this yeah, is that really just your your deal? So I don't know. To me, at the risk is sometimes the risk is worth it. That's just yeah. yeah well, because I feel it. like sometimes, well, most of the time, people are going. So a place like Flint, you wouldn't joke about the water because mm-hmm. they're going to a show and they really don't want to think about why well, there's another problem that I have. They want to joke about it. But something like mm-hmm. a Mormon joke, yeah, that's not really a problem people have that they're getting away from. If you joke on Mormons and mm-hmm. then it's more funny and it's not like a problem that they that's brought back up in a place that they but don't want it. There. Isn't that Really, the role of the comic, though, the comedian. Yeah, you're supposed to, to push it a little bit. To, to, and, and actually, I push you're just like, you're acknowledging it. Yes, the water here sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is, you know, you know it, we know it. Right. So yeah. do you think it, think do you think it works okay. if, you're, if you're on the side of them? So if, if you make a joke that's on the side of them and it, and it won't work it, if well, you're... There you, if it's funny, you're going to get away with it more sure. often, probably. And, and it I depends think, on how funny it is. I think a certain amount of respect comes from an audience... If you confidently plow through that and you don't steer clear, 
So if you just go straight mm-hmm. for the water, like first bit, like if you mm-hmm. went out, even in Flint, and you're like, can yeah. I get some water? And while they're having a water issue, yeah. it'd probably still work. Even if it, like, yeah. because you're bringing, you're shedding light yeah. onto something that is you're tough. You're acknowledging. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or even, like, speaking truth to power is kind of the comedian's job. So if you, like, only mm-hmm. do jokes that are super safe, or and I'm not political in my in my show at all, but but if I thought of a funny joke about Trump, I would say it. If I thought of a funny joke about Obama, I would say it. It just mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying it just sure it, it's it's part of the job to kind of poke fun at both sides too, almost equally. You want to mm-hmm. say you want I don't know. I think that there's things to laugh at on both sides of the aisle. That's, well, that's interesting. That's political interesting drama. though. Well, I mean, in, beside from political, but like. On the other end, do you think that maybe bringing stuff like uh, stuff like that up connects you more with the audience? Well, so in a, in political a way comedy, that, political comedy can disconnect because you can divide the audience in well, half. If they feel like, oh, well, this guy's a dyed-in-the-wool conservative, then I don't relate. You know, well, he's more, gonna more, more instead of political. I mean, I mean right. like local problems. Do you think that oh, they, yeah, maybe. they feel like, even though you know, they feel like you are connected and yeah. you are ready to be at a show where you are. Well, yeah. like a local reference, always yeah. win them over. Like if yeah. you if they if you think you've read their paper that day and you know about the mm-hmm. whatever mayor such and such, because mm-hmm. you always you always reference um, mm-hmm. like the the town the the weird town in the area mm-hmm. and yeah that's and, just kind of I call it a fill in the blank joke fill in the blank. I mean, yeah. everywhere you go, there's going to be that redneck town that people make yeah. fun of. There's going to be the you know the pretentious sure. highfalutin you know rich people town and and because that. Will yeah. connect them. They'll, they'll be like, "Oh, he knows." That's oh, yeah. what, who oh, we yeah. make fun yeah. of them. Oh yeah, yeah. You get extra points for doing your homework. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. it humanizes you and it personalizes you. Sure. Versus you just going up and hitting, hitting. Yeah, hitting know, all the points on your and, list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or are you playing that? Uh, what would you call it? The alien that was dropped down. What yeah. do you see? Like <laughs> in Paducah, they have this huge wall with artwork on the mm-hmm. wall, mm-hmm. and I just made something like you got. It was like the. Um, you know, the, what was it, the German, the, yeah, what was that called? Berlin Wall? Yeah, it looked did like the Berlin, that? I think I said, called it the Berlin, the Berlin Wall or the something. The Berlin Wall. That, that's kind of what it looks yeah, yeah. like. Oh, you know. Right. You know, that's, we're like, like, just weird things about the culture. Like last night when I was doing the merch pitch, we were in Myrtle Beach, and so I grew up going there to the beach for on vacation, so yeah. I said, well, if you buy anything from our table tonight, it comes with a free hermit crab. Free hermit crab, yeah. Which is yeah. what you get at the gift shops, yes. dumb gift shops in Myrtle Perfect. Beach. Oh, right? yeah. It was a huge laugh, because it's like... They, they've <laughs> right. all gotten one of those dumb things and they're let all stink dead. up their yeah, house. Yeah. yeah, they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, um, that's yeah. fun though. Yeah, interesting. It's fun. It's a good. It's, it's a fun challenge. And you know, once again, it's it's just you're trying to connect with people, and um, you know, and that's why they come to a live show. You know, they just don't want to see all the canned stuff. They want to see something that's fresh and mm-hmm. yeah, and current to that day or even to that town and. That's why it's always good to, to be aware of what's going on. I'll ask him. I'll say, what are you known for? You know? Oh, mm-hmm. we're the watermelon, yeah. you know, spitting <laughs> seed champion st- city in the world or something. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I just did uh, last week. I was, here, I was here in town, but I did uh, Irmo, which is right over from here. Irmo, South Carolina. Uh-huh. And so they had the little poster made up with my face all stretched over this yellow, you know, mimeograph paper. I was like, what is this? And so I took it on stage with me and I said, like, I know you're trying to get people out. This just says Sunday night com- stand-up comedy show. I said, we're in Irmo. How could you not think of Tickle Me Irmo? How did you not, <laughs> yeah. how could you not think of that? <laughs> and then the, I got a laugh. Then it was like, yeah. then Marty told me after, who lives here, my friend Marty Simpson, he was like, dude, you should have made fun of the okra strut. I go, what? Yeah, yeah. They have an okra festival, and they're known for it every yeah. year. People dress up like okra. I don't know what they do. It sounds what? like a dance, like the Harlem Shake. I do yeah. the okra strut. Yeah. I tore my <laughs> I tore ligaments in my knee. <laughs> I used to do the stanky leg, now I do the okra strut. 